Hello my dear students, welcome back to the lecture. So this entire series of lectures, I'll be adding a few videos uh, of a different project and we'll try to understand that. So if you remember, we had done the ground level, isn't it? After the ground level, we had put the props, the beam bottom, all those things are explained. And also I told you, this is your plinth level, isn't it? You had done the backfilling and here itself you'll put the concrete and over that you will, you will lay the tiles. But in some of the project, there's a concept called as grade slab. Let me write it here. There is a concept called as grade slab. Okay, so I'll write it as grade slab. What is this grade slab? So grade slab is a slab which is laid on the ground level or on the floor. For example, you see you have done a backfilling. Over that we'll put a reinforcement and then the slab will be casted which is called as grade slab or sometimes people call this as slab on grade. Okay, fine. So I'll show you the practical application of this like how these things are practically executed. Okay, fine. So if it is a very huge structure or if you want to uh, do a parking floor or something like that, no, in that case we go with a, a grade slab. But if it is a normal house construction and all, you do a backfilling, you do proper compaction, you put a 100 mm of PCC and then you start with the laying of the tiles. Okay. But whenever there is a huge load coming uh, in the basement level or let us say you want to do a car parking and all, then people can, they, usually we go with a grade slab. Okay. Great. So I'll start with the video part now. So first, yeah, so this is a different building what I'm trying to show you, not an issue. So see here, this is a ground level only they have, they have done all the reinforcement work and you can see that uh, this thing, that is how the reinforcement has been done. So you'll be putting a double mesh, that is you'll have a bottom mesh, you'll provide a chair bar and over that you'll provide another reinforcement and then the concreting will be done. Okay, great. Uh, so the one which you can see on the outer side, no, they all are the retaining wall. I'll explain you what is that retaining wall. So if you see that entire uh, building, these walls you can see, isn't it? So these are called as retaining wall. If you're not able to understand, I'll write it here. Retain. Yeah. Retaining wall. So what a retaining wall does, since we have gone below from the ground level, we have gone below now. And once we do the casting of this uh, slab, then we do the backfilling and all. So when you do the backfilling, I don't want the soil to get inside. In that case, what we do, we create a wall here, right? It's not, right now it's not there, but once, once the wall is get cast in, I'll add a video on that where you can see a wall here. So this wall will not allow the soil from the outside to come inside. So we call it as a retaining wall. Okay. So that will be done later, but the reinforcement for the retaining wall should be inserted in the slab reinforcement. So it will be something like vertical and you will be given an L. So this L whatever you can see, you know, that will be put inside the reinforcement of the slab. Okay. That is what, that is how the execution is done. So you can see, uh, so it, since it's a very huge area and we are doing the normal concreting with the help of a, a mixer machine. So this entire concreting cannot be done in a single day. Uh, when I went there in the morning, they have done up to here. And now these people have gone for the lunch and maybe by evening they'll cover another half part. But this will require two days since uh, there is no pumping concrete and all since uh, it's a local construction what we are doing here. Uh, but it's okay, not an issue. If you have a pumping concrete or if you're bringing a transit mixer, then this concreting could have finished in a single day, right? Yeah. So I'll just go forward. Uh, that is how it is. And one more thing, the mistake what these people have done is even though it's a huge building what we are doing, they haven't used a proper cover block. What these people have done, they made use of certain stone that is a granite chips and through that they are doing. Again, it's not the right construction practice, but fine. Since it's a local construction, no much people are involved. People are okay with that. But if you are working in some of the project, make sure that you are using a cover block. Okay. Yeah. So you can see it now. This how, the, yeah, this is what I was speaking of. This reinforcement, this reinforcement will come and it will be L is given, the L is given in this way. Reinforcement will come, L is given. So in this way, once you do the concreting of this slab, what will happen? This reinforcement will properly stay there and then you can do the retaining wall uh, concreting. Okay, great. So I'll go a bit forward. So try to go through this. Here the shuttering is done because up to this height, we are going to do the concreting of this particular slab. And you can see everywhere reinforcement has been put up and this is a normal nominal mix design what we are doing. Okay. We have a concrete mixer over there and this is how the reinforcement is arranged. Hmm. 
okay this is a chair bar we know now we have understood what is chair bar and all so you can see the reinforcement for the walls and all okay so this much part of the concreting has happened after that the next part will do it later once this is done so this is how the arrangement has been done so that the person with the wheelbarrow can come through that platform and is going to pour the concrete over there so this is another uh, video what i have taken a retaining will be done after some time right now this is a nominal mix design and you can see these people putting water uh, fine aggregate coarse aggregate and cement so certain ratio will take and through that we are going to do okay so this is the arrangement what we have done through which the people will come and they will put the concrete here right so uh, overall the work is good no problem with that uh, only the problem is with the cover block they could have used a cover block other than that rest all things are okay now if somebody asks you tell me what is a concrete required here it's very simple i have taught you all these things you just want to know what is the length of this entire slab what is the breadth of this entire slab and you want the thickness multiply the length multiply the breadth and multiply the thickness you will get the concrete quantity now for whatever concrete quantity you get if i ask you how much cement how much sand and how much aggregate is required you can do it very simple let us say if the to let us say the total concrete quantity which comes out to be around 50 cubic meter okay good and the ratio is let us say 1 is to uh, 1.5 let us go with m m20 grade of concrete since it's rcc okay then you can find how much cement how much sand and how much aggregate is required i already explained you all these things okay great so you can see with the help of the wheelbarrow this so this entire area if you do the slab no so this is called a slab on grade it's on the ground level only we are putting a slab there huh? maybe later this particular area you can use as a parking area or something like that okay so that you want a strength that is why we put this slab normal reinforcement we have used here 8 and 10 diameter bar we have used it here and that is sufficient okay since uh, no much load will come the load is only because of the parking and all that load will come okay that's it beneath this we have a foundation if you see here beneath this column we have a foundation we have gone to this ground level this is a level where we have reached now okay great So I hope you have enjoyed my lecture up to here. So this was the first part of this particular building what I have added where we understood how the great slab is to be casted. So we will see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.